What's the real story between Harry and Meghan and the Bidens? What is behind the royal family's radical new approach to the military? And did James Bond forget his manners when it came to the Princess of Wales? We discuss all that and more on another busy show for you. And welcome to Palace Confidential. I am Sarah Vine, standing in for Joe Elvin, and here to discuss all the week's stories are the Daily Mail's Royal Editor, Rebecca English, and the Paper's Diary Editor, Richard Eden. A reminder that if you don't already, make sure you subscribe to our channel and never miss another episode. Rebecca, let's start this week with a story from the Mail on Sunday um, that in a break from tradition, they've decided, the Royal Family decided that George may not enter the military. Yes, yeah, so it's been mooted that they that George obviously he's only about to turn ten. He's 10 so, bless him. Yeah, you know, really? we're talking ten, twelve years in the yeah. future. But that this tradition of senior members of the royal family, uh, particularly the men, uh, having a stint in the armed forces, mm. it might not be as prescriptive as we think, and mm. that they might choose something uh, different, something different for him for later. Him. And I think William himself, and I'm, I don't know what you think, Richard, but William himself has proved that there are there is more than one way to serve. Yeah, because he, he did he, the helicopter he, yeah, flying, exactly. didn't he? Yeah. He was in the army, then he did join the RAF, mm. then he continued to, uh, to join with Search and Rescue, mm. because he, I mean, he said to me once that he, he felt he wanted to be able to look. Yeah. The forces in the eye, and that he had served in the way that they well, did, well, even if he couldn't go to the this front is, line. This is this is a point that you made, I thought, quite accurately, which is that you said I think it's important for people, members of the royal family, to be able to understand what we ask our royal fa our, 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 our armed forces to do, and I think that is quite a good point. Yeah, I mean, what's the key role of of the royal family these days, and? For me, you know, a big part of that is that connection with with the military. Mm. You know, it comes the historical role of you know leading the forces, and they may not do that physically anymore, yeah. but they're still very much you know commander in chief, our monarch. Mm. So it's important to keep that tradition alive, and I think it would you know it would sort of raise all sorts of uncomfortable questions mm. if if that link was. I mean, was I to think end. also if you think about Harry and the reason that one of the reasons that he was so very popular. You know, before everything, was that he did serve properly in the army, didn't he? And people felt that he, he really had that connection. Yeah, I mean, it's not just um, with our royal family. You know, we see in Spain um, Princess Leonor, mm. the future queen, she starts, um, I think, in September doing three years with mm. each of the forces before she goes to university, so from the age of 17. So I think, you know, for any country that, that values its royal mm. family, you, you want to keep that connection. Mm. I, I mean, I did find the story um, surprising, really. I, I don't quite clear why it came out, but it seems like they might be um, just wanting to put it out there, test mm. the water a bit mm. to see would it be a problem if if George didn't. But yeah, I mean, I don't knows. know. I wonder what our what our viewers will think. Do let us know. Um, so, um, so Rebecca, this story was given a bit of a twist uh, this week at Wimbledon when uh, the two children were there, and and uh, George was very much sort of suit suited and this was sort of a little bit felt to be a bit controversial I mean I thought the criticism of him was was a bit harsh actually and his parents decision to mm. to get him to wear a jacket and tie because there is actually a dress code yes. in the royal box at Wimbledon and yeah. if you look every man in the in the box was wearing a, a jacket shirt and tie and obviously children wouldn't normally be allowed in the royal box no. so it was a special treat for him as a member of the royal family and I actually think he probably would have felt more comfortable looking like his dad and yeah. Yeah. looking like everybody else. And I, I was sort of transfixed by Charlotte in her fabulous sunglasses, <laughs> you know, looking oh, like a sort of movie star. There was a great <laughs> picture of her and George together, yeah. and they had their heads together, and they were looking out, and I kind of got slight chills of it. I was thinking of Charles and Anne, and, uh, you know, that, Riviera, that, wasn't that it? relationship <laughs> in years to come of her supporting yeah. them and how close they were. I thought that was brilliant. She was a, a, yeah, a, a knockout star. No, she, she already is. I mean, Richard, do you think it's... I, mean, I thought it was a little unusual that they were at Wimbledon. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it, Prince George has been there before, yeah. but it was the first time for Princess Charlotte, and obviously um, they don't have to go to these sort of events. You know, it's not a royal event. No. Um, but it's the final day of Wimbledon. Um, they're there with lots of sort of famous names mm. as well. So William and Catherine obviously thought it would be a nice mm. opportunity. I mean, from what we saw of the children, they were loving it. They seemed to be very... Yeah, they were so well behaved. I very mean, my animated. children would not have behaved that well. Well, I, I just exactly I mean, what I was thinking, I, I wouldn't Sarah. be that... I mean, yeah. I, I don't know how she gets them to behave. I mean, I think the parents obviously thought it would be a nice family yeah. occasion. Um, 
and you know um, we're grateful for that in the sense it's fun to but you know I think back children. to I think back to when you know William and Harry were younger you didn't really see them at that sort of event did you I mean the, do you think this is a new pattern do you think the kids are going to be much more involved and it, sort of random public events? It's certainly a very interesting question because we are seeing um, the children perhaps a bit more than some people might mm. expect, you mm. know? Um, you know, there was a, another, there was an engagement last week, which I think we'll talk about later as well, to an air show. Oh, yes, that's right. And yeah. um, so, you know, because really they only have to be on show sort of on their birthdays mm. or at Sandringham at yeah. Christmas, something like that. Um, so they are sort of giving us a few more glimpses of the children. Well, it's very much a sense for me of them already sort of earning their keep in a funny kind of a way. Uh, <laughs> well, I think also it's a, it's a way for their parents to introduce mm. them to big audiences, mm. to people watching them, but in a way that's kind of fun and not very intimidating yeah, yeah. for them. But, I mean, people will comment on their appearance, and I think for a young child that's quite difficult to deal with. I mean, there was a lot of comment about how much George looks like his great-uncle, <laughs> yeah, uh, Charles I mean, Spencer. Yeah. Um, is it his great? I mean, is people, that his great uncle? I people can be quite unkind, yeah. and you know, you mentioned about um, George dressed in a very formal way, yeah. and so you know, lots of people are sort of having a go on online. Why does he have to yeah. dress like that? That sort of thing. So yeah, that that that's the sort of downside of it. And you see, the thing is, once the children before you know, until the children are older and they come onto social media, they won't know that all these things are being said about them. But I think there's going to be a real it's going to be quite an interesting they're going to have to handle it very carefully because we haven't really had that level of social media scrutiny uh, no we haven't no. and i know that's something that william and kate are acutely aware of yeah. um William, in, in particular, um, has, has publicly railed against mm. social media and, and trolling and the kind of the, the amount of, you know, bitterness and bile that there can mm. be on it. And, uh, you know, he's also spoken about his frustration about not being able to get the social media companies mm. to take a stand against this. Mm. Um, so I know it's something they're acutely aware of. And obviously they're, they're too young to have, you know, phones or or, you know, starting to look on social media sites, we hope. Um, and I know it's something they want to protect them from as long as possible. Yeah, but they're not under any pressure from the media to no, sort of not make all, more no. appearances. That's the thing. Yeah. You know, we kind of only expect them yeah. to be um, at the big events like yeah. coronation, funerals, etc. But so, you see, the thing is, is if they are out and about, it's very difficult not to comment on it because they yeah. are so, I mean, they're so fantastic. So, you know, there will be, I think, a sort of this thing where people will start to write more and more about them as they are, the more they're in the public eye, the more people will sort of subconsciously just bring them into that commentary and I just wonder whether that's sensible or not yeah, as a interesting. mother. Mm. And Richard, um, you were a little bit mischievous around Wimbledon too, weren't you? Because you wrote a little comment saying that I uh, thought it was a bit miffed. You were a bit miffed that um, uh, Daniel Craig didn't rise to greet uh, Princess of Wales in the customary fashion. I, I was just a bit shocked by these photos, you know, because you saw, um, you know, Daniel Craig, who as James Bond should be the height of um, British Gentlemanly, good manners, yes. gentlemanly conduct, that sort of thing. Um, and he was just, you know, seated while um, Princess of Wales came over to have a um, you know, quick word with him and his wife, Rachel Weiss. Mm. And they, they were just sort of seated there. Like that. Yeah, he didn't even take off his shades. No. It just looked so rude to me. Yeah. You know, I just think kind of, if anyone came over to talk to you, you'd stand yeah. up. I should say that I've since heard from um, Wimbledon, though, and they've been keen to sort of make the point that... Um, the people in the Royal Box are asked not to stand up. Stand up and, and down all the time because yeah, he gets because in the way of the tennis. <laughs> I, I, well, exactly. Mm. And also, otherwise, if the princess sort of pops out for any reason, <laughs> yeah. they don't want the whole Royal Box yeah. to be standing up. But, Rebecca, this is an interesting question for you because you spend a lot of time in and around, well, with the royals. I mean, what is the etiquette? Do you, do you sort of curtsy first thing in the morning and last thing at night, or do you spend your whole day bobbing up and down? <laughs> I suppose it depends who you are. So I actually... I, I don't because I think I'm there in a professional capacity. Oh, so you are queen. <laughs> um, I'm there in a professional capacity. Yeah. I'm, I'm incredibly polite, as I'd like to think I always would mm. be with Beauty. Now, I'll say sir or mum, mm. um, but uh, it's certainly not expected of me, and, and I wouldn't. That said, with staff, it's quite interesting. So if a member of the royal family comes into the room, the staff, even if they're not being directly approached by that member of the royal family, they would curtsy or bow. And I've even seen it happen when they kind of walk past and they will give a little oh, okay. a bob or a yeah. curtsy. And I once asked a member of staff, like, why, why do you do that, just out of interest? 
And they said, when you work for that institution, it, it's, it's a mark of respect. Mm. And no one requests it of you, but you just feel like you want you want to give it. You want so, to, yeah. And is there, do you think there's a difference in the generations? Because do you think the sort of older generation are a bit more stiff about these rules and regulations and then the slightly younger ones are a bit more laissez-faire? Uh, definitely, yeah. and also actually, you know, Princess, the, the Princess of Wales didn't seem bothered that that Craig didn't get she, up. She, did she? her, would, they wouldn't, they wouldn't expect it at all. I mean, I think the days of, you know, the grandness of people like Princess Margaret, yes. who would expect people to do that, whatever the circumstances, they're gone. And actually, I did the only couple of times I have curtsied personally was to Queen Elizabeth when I was in a lineup or something, yeah. and it just felt like the right thing to do. Mm. And luckily, I remembered, you know, from the age of three, good toes, naughty toes. And doing my ballet, yeah. and I think I managed to just about <laughs> carry it off. Because the worst thing you the can do is to, the worst thing you can do is bob, isn't it? Well, that's what the staff do. It's more of a they bob. Do more it, of a it's bob. more of a bob. It's okay. a kind of act of of recognition and respect. Maybe so. we should get you to give us a demonstration. Uh -huh. Maybe we shouldn't. Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> We're in a very small studio. There's not and, really and, much. And, yes, and I'm well so, wearing a dress. I'm yeah. so clumsy. I tell you now, those glasses of water would just go flying. <laughs> That's very funny. I was, I was once, I once had to meet Prince Charles, and I was given strict instructions on how to curtsy, and sort of almost lessons on how to do it. And I very dutifully did all my lessons, and then when it came to the moment, I just bobbed. <laughs> I just lost my nerve. Everything I don't know what it was. It's, it's, it's odd. You Maybe know. that's what happened to Daniel Craig. You know, probably, he just got a bit nervous. Exactly. He, was so awed no, he could by have just lost his nerve because it is suddenly overwhelming because you, you sort of know you're supposed to do something and then if you're me you just get it completely wrong uh, well we've heard from these two so let's hear some of your comments now and lots of you were writing in about Richard's comments on Joe Biden touching the king on the back Judith Taggart says I am American Biden doddering around and putting his hand on the king was embarrassing perhaps a book on protocol should be given to our presidents prior to a visit I remember Trump walking in front of the queen yes we all remember that uh, Amy Storer meanwhile defended the president she says as an American I'd like to point out that we are more outgoing than the British and although I am not a Biden fan, I feel his touching King Charles was more an instinctual gesture of friendship, as this is a natural behaviour for us. She also sends her love from the USA, and we send love back to you in our very reserved British way. Finally, Chris Clark joined in the discussion over the new Princess of Wales. Chris says, I think we should call Kate the titanium rose because titanium is harder than steel and in its purest form is highly resistant to heat and abrasion, which describes her beautifully serene demeanour throughout this trying time. And because she is also the perfect English rose, high praise, though sadly Chris's comment came too late for our poll. Last week, we asked viewers what was the best description of Catherine. The choices were steel marshmallow, a velvet fist in an iron glove or a steel magnolia. Well, you voted in your thousands. And the winner, with 53%, was Iron Fist in a Velvet Glove. Check our YouTube community page for more polls coming soon. Uh, Richard, we'll kick this section off with an extraordinary story that has emerged overnight about Harry and Meghan, the Bidens and the Palace. Can you tell us more? Yeah, this is in um, Mail Online. It's absolutely fascinating about um, the latest sort of... Um, well, it, essentially, it's all about the efforts of Prince Harry and Meghan to move into the political sphere, really, mm. to um, improve their contacts mm. with um, the American president. And uh, in particular, the allegations were that they had um, asked um, if, if <laughs> I, funny so I'm trying to keep it straight face. <laughs> they, they asked if they could have a ride on, um, yeah, on um, Air, Air Force One <laughs> on the way back from Queen Elizabeth's funeral. Yeah. To be fair, you know, they thought it could be environmentally friendly. Yeah. You know, it saves paying for extra flights. Um, but it was made clear to them, I'm sure in a very polite American way, that um, they couldn't join the president and his wife on, on this plane. So that, that was one. And then the other example was that apparently Jill Biden was, was interested in attending the Invictus Games, the mm. last games. These are the games for injured ex-servicemen yeah, yeah, and women yeah, yeah. that Harry's um, been, you know, he's established mm. this charity. And the latest games was in um, The Hague in the Netherlands. Yeah. And Jill Biden had been invited, I think, and she was interested in going. But apparently the advice coming from Britain, I think probably more from government than the palace, was that it probably wasn't a great idea um, to be sort of cozying up to Harry and Meghan. Um, because of their yeah. awkward relations with the royal family. Yeah. Um, our viewers will remember um, images 
from those games where Harry and Meghan were being, you know, we saw Meghan in a sort of succession of different outfits and they were being followed round by this Netflix, Netflix crew yeah. the whole time. So it may be also that Jill Biden, frankly, didn't want to be sort of mm. caught up in the Harry and Meghan reality show I mean, show this circus. was a little while ago, wasn't it? When, when yeah, were last they? Year, yeah. Last year. And at that stage, I think Harry and Meghan were still sort of the, the, the darlings of America high society, weren't they? I mean, they were still hanging out with, you know, all the top, celebrities mm. that that's sort of slightly waned now so maybe Jill Biden just sort of caught got caught up in that well it certainly ties in uh, with things we've heard yeah. about um, Megan having political ambitions herself yeah. and the couple wanting to yeah. sort of see themselves almost like the Obamas you know yes. they were going to be the new Obamas well that's what I mean that's what's interesting Rebecca isn't it about the airplane story which is that it's a little bit presumptuous to think that you can just jump on Air Force One <laughs> Yeah, and of course, a, a bit like we have in the UK, there's a question of cost as well. You mm. can't just, you have to justify mm. the cost to American taxpayers like mm. you would do, or the royal family have to do here. So, but, I mean, they're private citizens, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, this is the key thing. It's like, I mean, you and I might as well ask if we can have a lift <laughs> yeah. on, on Air Force One. I mean, they're not, you know, if he was still a royal, a working royal, I mean, I don't know what the etiquette is here, but, but they're, they're not working royals anymore, are they? So, mm. so in that respect, doesn't it doesn't even stack up. Exactly, and I think... I think part of the problem is is that I mean the Buckingham Palace would not presume to tell mm. America the White House what their first lady or their president should or should not do but I suspect officials in the UK if they were asked about it would say it's probably not a good idea mm. it's probably not a good look let's just keep a little bit of distance between them because that's what diplomats are, are designed to do mm. so um, you know it's, it's, a, it's a tricky one for Buckingham Palace they wouldn't presume to tell you and also but, don't you think in, sort of after the Queen's funeral also lends it a sort of extra dimension of, of, of oddness I mean I would I, I find it quite an odd request I must, yeah. must be honest you know and then remember you know it was a very wise decision sort of not to let them on because since then obviously mm. we've had the Netflix series with all the criticism of the royal family we've yeah. had Prince Harry's book yeah. so the last thing the Americans would want I is mean, to be caught up You don't want the American in, president caught up in all of that, that do you? No so um, I think it seems to What, what cool do you think about prevailed. Meghan's uh, you know, political aspirations in America do you think they, do you think they have legs? Um, I think she definitely has them and mm. I've, I've heard that from various people in the past whether, whether that comes off, I don't know. Some people have suggested to me she may not have a thick enough skin for politics. You know, you know yourself how um, very difficult. It, yes. It's yeah. a hard business to be in, and is she the right person for that? I'm, I'm not sure. So we'll, well see. No, yes, no, she doesn't traditionally have a thick skin when it comes to these things. But, I, but it's interesting because she would position herself as a Democrat, wouldn't she? Um, certainly seems to be leaning yeah. that way, and she certainly wasn't a great fan of um, Donald, Donald Trump. No, that's true, and of we course we've got that. an American no, Neither was he a fan of her, I no. think he said, wasn't he? Um, but we have got an American election coming up, so it'd be interesting to keep an eye on it, to see whether she leans in, as it were. Well, obviously, I think she was very much involved in, a, in you know, lobbying attempts previously yeah. uh, in terms of trying to use her influence. Didn't she do something? Didn't she do something in the in the last election? Um, that was yeah. just about really encouraging people to vote. Oh, so, yes. so that was yes. um, not the partisan. But, but that in itself was political because they were there was complaints, wasn't there, I think, and our American viewers would know more about this than mm. me, that, that, that they were trying to encourage uh, areas of the community that would feel traditionally slightly disadvantaged disenfranchised oh. and the feeling was that those people if they were to vote would probably be more likely to vote, to vote Demo Democrats. Democrats. Yeah. So yeah. Um, you know it is it's it, it's a no-go for a member of the royal family to get involved in that and I think there's people who would argue it's still a very tricky territory for even former. I, I agree I think I think I think to, it is very tricky. In. Anyway so we'll see we'll see what happens. Uh, Richard you once again wrote another story this week about the Duke of Sussex who seems to have lost another friend he's been working with. Can you tell us about that? This is quite a big deal this is the charity Centre Barley which mm. um, Prince Harry established a long time ago with um, Prince of Lesotho and it was all about helping um, children suffer because of HIV and orphans in in southern Africa. Mm. And so it's, it's a great charity but he's lost the story was he's lost his um, chairman, um, he's been chairman of the board, um, Johnny Hornby, been oh, chairman of the board right. for five years and he'd been a trustee and a great friend of Harry mm. um, for, for a long time. So he's resigned, he's been replaced by um, a lady who's Zimbabwe born. Um, so it's, it, the, the key point is that he's 
Prince Harry has lost someone who's been a long-term well, friend Hornby and advisor. Well, Johnny Hornby is very much part of the sort of British sort of tough social set, isn't he? Yeah, and the, the reason why you know, the one was, that Harry was sort of belonged to. Yeah, and the, the reason this story sort of had a bit of edge to it was that Hornby, as well as being a friend of Prince Harry, is also a great mate of Jeremy Clarkson. Yeah. And he's also a business partner of yeah. Clarkson. Now, our viewers will know that relations with Jeremy Clarkson are a bit awkward since he wrote that um, column in The Sun about, yeah. about Meghan. So I think um, things have been a bit tense there. Yeah. Um, I think they're all very very keen to insist that um, his departure has nothing whatsoever to do with well, we all know Clarkson that's not or his true. friendship. But, uh, but this feeds into this whole thing with with them, doesn't it, where ha Harry just seems to be constantly pulling away more and more from his sort of British roots, as it were. I mean, I hear that you know he doesn't talk to any of his old friends, he doesn't listen to any of his old advisers, people like Tiggy, who used to be quite sort of key to helping him, they're just not there anymore, are they? No, and and they've always been considered pretty mm. safe pairs of hands. Mm. The people who've got Harry's best inter interest genuinely mm. at heart, and I think there was a time that he he would listen to them. And and you lose those friends. I think you lose those friends as your peril. Sometimes your I think I've said on this program before. Your best friends are the ones that gently tell you the truth. Of that, course, yes. That, you know, that that won't row with you, won't fall out with you, but will point out if they think you're making a wrong decision. But also, they all predate his wife, don't they? Mm. Yeah, and, and I think also when you've moved abroad, as he has, yeah. you know, it is quite important to keep up those old links, yeah. isn't it? Even if it's just the odd email or mm. cards or whatever. You but know, it, feels, it feels like he's very isolated to me, you know, because he doesn't maintain... You know, when you get married to somebody, as we have all done, it's important to keep your old friends because if things get tough or if you need help, it's good to have those people who predate all of that and it seems to me that Harry is sort of on his own completely he does he's in a he's in an environment where he doesn't have any of his old friends and it's all American it's all Megan yeah it's a bit of a bubble and it's yeah. I don't think that's particularly healthy and I really hope for Santa Barley this doesn't herald uh, you know problems for him and the charity because mm. I, I remember being with him when he set up Santa Barley mm. um, covering uh, the kind of the initial stages and it was a bit of a rocky road but it was a charity he was so passionate about yeah. it was set up in memory of his late mother Santa Barley means forget me not uh, which was something personal for Diana but also his 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 co-founder uh, Prince Aso of Lesotho and he invested so, kind of heart you know body and soul mm. in that I remember being in Lesotho and he was showing us around these kind of amazing new buildings and the centre he was setting up there for the children with um, you know, HIV and AIDS and he was just so passionate mm. about it and I don't think he's been back to Africa to see their work for yeah. quite a long while that's sad no. uh, and that is really sad and he's made clear himself that he would be happiest really living in Africa mm. yes. you know, being involved in these sort of things yeah. so yeah he's found himself in a very but maybe if world. your wife wants to be president of the united states that's a bit tricky well it, true but interestingly there has been talk about some television project i, I don't know oh, really? the truth of it but there has been talk that he may be going back to africa to do some sort of television series perhaps for netflix oh, well, i think, that would, be, is, I think yeah. that would be actually I, that would be something i would love to watch because i do i think you're right this is his real passion mm. and, it it's very authentic. and it's something he could speak from the heart about mm. and and will come across instinctively mm. yeah brilliant Richard, uh, now to another Mail on Sunday story about Prince Andrew. Do, can you ex ex expand on that? Um, it was rather a, a murky one. Yeah. Because um, it, it all relates to, um, you know, the late sex offender Jeffrey Epstein mm. um, and also to Jez Staley, former boss of Barclays, who was a great mate of, of Epstein. Mm. And they have documents, the Mail on Sunday had, where it was from Epstein to Staley um, asking about funding for a company, very mysterious company. It's a company that seemed to be no records of or anything. So it's it's really not clear what was going on there. So, so what we're saying really is it's Andrew using his, his influence to try and drum up some cash for a slightly dodgy company in... Where was it? Uzbekistan uh, or one of um, those places? Well, it's, it's, it's not clear where it was, yeah. but also crucially the timing, you see, because Prince Andrew had stayed in New York with and Jeffrey Epstein. That famous Epstein. photograph of him walking in the park. Yeah. yeah, and he made clear in his interview with Emily Maitlis that he didn't have any contact um, with Epstein after that. 
but th these emails would suggest you know that might not necessarily be the case so yeah it is a murky business mm. and I think perhaps there'll be more to come more to come and Rebecca do you when this sort of things comes out do you feel a little bit sorry for Harry who has his own ambitions to make money but they seem to be constantly thwarted do you think the times have changed oh, I mean I'm not sure I feel massively sorry for Prince Harry but I, <laughs> <laughs> I think you know he's made his bed and he's gonna mm. you know have to lie in it um, I you can see where his frustration comes from that he he feels people such as his uncle have been afforded the opportunity to make money mm. as a member of the royal family mm. without uh, really any censure. Yeah, and yet he, he, still he sticks his head above the parapet. And everyone, so you can see yeah. where it comes from. But I, you know, I don't think there's many people that will but feel you, sorry for him. Do you think there's a sort of pattern here between the spare, you know, the two spares, because they are Andrew and Harry are both spares, aren't they? Um, sort of slightly being a bit Del Boy about things. <laughs> well, I think it is that kind of... You might of... have to explain Del Boy. Yeah. Yeah. I sorry, I have to explain to Del Boy to our... Well, yeah, Del, Del Boy is yeah. sort of TV wheeler-dealer yes, type thing. Yeah. And, but I think, yeah, it is that sort of sense of searching for a role. Yes. You know, with both of them trying to find their way. You know, how are they doing it? Are they yeah. doing it from business? Yeah. I mean, we should say that, you know, Buckingham Palace and Prince Andrew have always denied that he was um, trying to make any money. Mm. They've always said that... Well, Andrew used to always think of himself as a sort of advocate for British business. Exactly. That was his. That was the niche that he tried to occupy. Yeah. He did a lot of going going around the world, didn't he, and going to sort of business conferences and stuff like that. And he's always denied that he was trying to make money for, for himself, himself personally. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we should make that clear. Well, of course, he doesn't need to. Whereas, of course, now Harry does, doesn't he? We well, say Andrew doesn't need to, but I mean that that has been the problem for mm. him is that they ha he has aspired to a very grand lifestyle mm. with Royal Lodge and the you know holidays abroad and you know golfing holidays to Spain and there's not really had the Royal family aren't very cash rich and he's not really had the, so the I mean, funds uh, to do I mean, that. He, he's not sort of living in a box is he I mean he can live perfectly well on what the, what do, what does he get from the from the royal purse well, again this is the problem mm. that he doesn't get any money now from the royal purse at all and the big issue is that King Charles has now stopped the allowance mm. that he used to get from the uh, from the late Queen, which mm. I think was in excess of two hundred thousand a year. Right. Uh, from so her personally, he stopped doing that. Okay. So it's put Andrew in a in a real financial hole. He's taken losses on the chalet that he invested mm. in, and this this. This kind of is adding to the situation, this big, great big question about Royal Lodge and whether he will ever be able to afford mm. to live there anymore. But mm. if he's not getting any pocket money from the King, then how is he supposed to support his lifestyle? Well, there'll be a lot of bequests that he's had over the years right. um, from his mother, the Queen Mother, other family members. He'll already have investments of his own. And I he's mean, got his forces pension. I was just going to say, <laughs> I mean, yeah, the modest forces pension. But... I'm not sure how all of that will, will bankroll the lifestyle that he has been right. used to. And he is quite grand in his lifestyle, isn't he, Andrew? Well, I think he was, but he, he doesn't do much these days no, other than no. sort of ride round Windsor Great mm. Park. So, you know, maybe that's that's a good thing. Yes. So, Rebecca, our King and Queen are in Wales today, and I know you were hoping to join them, but thankfully you're here. Tell us what they're doing. Um, it's what they call in royal circles a classic royal away day. So <laughs> <laughs> quite different from our kind of away days, but uh, very jolly nonetheless. It's when they go to one particular part of the country and really kind of focus on a number mm. of engagements. So they are in uh, Brecon. It's actually the first. It's not called Brecon anymore, Rebecca. Is it I not? Must go pull on. You up on that. It's called something in Welsh that no one can pronounce. Oh yes, so it's remember, been a big it was renamed. About, yes, yes, yeah. Anyway. Um, well, don't put me on the spot and ask me <laughs> I don't to worry. try and I'm Welsh it. and I don't know what yeah. it's called, so don't worry. Um, so they're there. Um, they are. It's the first time he's visited Wales since the coronation, yeah. and obviously. The king was Prince of Wales for most of his life, and he has a real particular affinity uh, with that part of the United Kingdom. And it, it's the classic they're doing, military, theatre, agricultural shows. Um, uh, the queen's going to be going to a domestic refuge. So they're, they're packing in as much as they can to the day. And they've got a... But uh, talking of, of him having a great affinity for Wales, he has a house in Wales, which is... It's Causing a few problems, I understand, um, Richard. Yes, the, the Mel Sunday ran a story about this at the week. Mel Sunday again. At, at the weekend. <laughs> um, very interesting story that um, you see now, obviously. Um, Prince of Wales is Prince William and yes. he's inherited lots of stuff as um, part of his role in the Duchy of Cornwall yeah. and he has these houses which previously belonged to his father mm -hmm. and um, 
it, the king was King Charles was very keen to keep a keep a property in Wales mm -hmm. that he would stay in when he visited, mm -hmm. and um, Prince William doesn't want to do that. He wants to stay at um, bed and breakfast and this type of thing. So he's letting out this property, yeah, and which is uh, very nice. It's um, a lovely, it's lovely cottage yeah. in a village. I forget the name. Um, it, again, it's on the edge of the Brecon yes. Beacons, if we can say yeah. that. And this has caused a bit of anguish. Uh, the Mail on Sunday reported that King Charles was um, miffed, according to a source, that he's had to sort of clear out all his things and. He he won't have this um, place to stay, and um, Prince William. So it's not. So is it on Airbnb? I mean, can I? <laughs> can I, <laughs> I go? I think on it's to Airbnb, it? as in H E I R. Oh, <laughs> Richard! Very good, Richard. Um, that was very. Good, though, you know that? that was good. <laughs> Excellent. But um, yeah, so it's caused um, a few tensions, mm. according to the paper. Yeah, I can see that. So Rebecca, this is this is. I mean, joking aside, I did think Airbnb was very good. I think that was really good. <laughs> this is part and parcel of them, just sort of handing over various estates, everything being rearranged. Well, absolutely. I mean, let's not forget King Charles is the, the pinnacle of hereditary monarchy. Yes. And, and, and you can't eschew those principles. So he always knew at a, a certain time in his life that he would be handing the baton of the Duchy of Cornwall mm. over to his son. Mm. Uh, so, you know, William is now Duke of Cornwall. And he, as Richard says, he wants to do things slightly differently. Um, can I see the king being maybe slightly saddened mm -hmm. that William is not going to use the home he put so much passion into doing mm. up and as as you said i mean i have been there as well not, it's not as a guest and working there mm. it is it it's this it was these old farm buildings mm. and they've done them up as these beautiful holiday lets mm. and it's surrounded by wildflower meadows. I mean, that meadows. part of the world, I mean, if, it's you know, if you're listening in America, you should visit it because it really is beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, the it, 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 and there's a real peace and tranquility mm. and you can understand actually why if he's got to spend a significant mm. time in Wales mm. that Charles would have preferred something mm. like that than an anonymous hotel. Well it's real or... balm for the soul that mm. part of the world and it's interesting Charles also likes to go to places like Transylvania he has this real connection with nature and with landscape doesn't he he's, he's a person who loves to be in nature and I'm not, you know, you, you're right. Maybe he feels a bit sad that his son doesn't quite see it the way he. Did. I mean, it's still there, and he still yeah, can use it if he wants to, because mm. it's always been a holiday mm. let. But what they did is they had a, a couple of rooms in this kind of collection of buildings that they would keep the the then Prince of Wales's stuff mm. for, for when he wanted to stay there. This will all be let out now, mm. um, uh, but you know. William wants to do things differently. He mm. wants to shine a light on kind of local industries throughout Wales, staying at B&B's and, and, and also hotels. William has been very vocal about homelessness and all of that sort of thing and, you know, second home ownership. And I, maybe he feels that having a sort of a house that you don't really use in Wales is not very fair if you're a local person who yeah, can't afford very that. Possible. And so. actually, how wonderful that any of us, mm. any of our viewers, mm. you could now actually go and yeah. and go and stay in a royal residence, you know, sleep in the same yeah. bed that, that King Charles has yes, used for so use many years. Yes, use the same loo seat. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not that. There's a, there's, a, there's a lot of stories about yes, loo seats, but maybe there's another... What are the loo seat stories? There, no, there, there were, it was once claimed that he... Uh, the, uh, the then Prince of Wales would, would take his own toilet seat. It was, wasn't the it? That was a famous story. The, the then Carrot's house were at huge pains to, to knock this one <laughs> off at the knees. Um, uh, whether there's any truth in it, I don't know. Um, but yeah, he, loose seats and him is, is a I bit just of a love to think of there being a sort of, yeah. you know, there being a sort of privy loose seat person <laughs> whose job it is to just polish the loose seat and carry it. Well, surely that's for a privy councillor. Oh, thank <laughs> you. You're on fire You're on today, fire Richard, today. your <laughs> jokes, aren't you? <laughs> actually, if you ever go to Buckingham Palace for a reception, the, the loos are actually the most fascinating part of going there. And I really hope with this refurbishment they don't change the them. Why? Because they're the proper old fashioned, really tall, long pipes with this kind of oh, yes. system at the top. Thomas Crapper. Uh, yeah, the, and the, the the big square old yes. wooden toilet seats. Yeah. Which I you mean, can really settle into. Yeah, if you're allowed to use your phone, they're very Instagrammable. Um, so I really hope they don't lose those. I feel like we've gone on a tangent with yeah, this sorry, program. We sorry, never we've, 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 go. gone, we've gone down the toilet a little bit, haven't we? <laughs> our future King George the Seventh turns 10 this weekend to mark the occasion here are some of our favourite pictures of the young prince.
Happy birthday, George, from all of us here. A reminder that if you enjoy our content, remember to like and subscribe so you don't miss any of our raw shows like this one. And thanks as always to Rebecca and to Richard, and thank you to you for watching. We will see you next time. Goodbye.